morning, everyone, and welcome to Christ Memorial. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and please stand, we'll begin our worship. Okay, wait, is he playing now? Is he there? Okay, well, okay, you do that. Where are you, Pastor Charles? There you go. That's what happens. And uh, just really quickly, uh, he, he, he said he's accepting a call because he wants to hang out with me more. So you're going to be right. stuck with both of us. So, so, so sorry. 
with that, if you can join us for the picnic today, please do so. We'd love to have you. Uh, whether you were or were not expecting it, uh, you don't have to have potato salad to hang out with us, okay? So please feel free today. We're going to be talking about 2 Corinthians. Go we for it. We also have a meeting right after the uh, budget. To vote on the budget. Shouldn't take but a couple minutes. We've got to give the guys time to cook the hot dogs and uh, hamburgers, you know. So. Uh, what a downer, man. Gee, That's my okay, job. Bring okay. everybody down. I know. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, bring us back up. All right. If the kids want to come up and oh. sing this one from VBS, we're going to do some other ones later, but they can help lead this one for the congregation. y'all very much. That's awesome. I'm glad that you are all able to join us uh, this week. Uh, oh, uh, uh, some of you are sitting. Go ahead. Go ahead and sit. Go ahead and sit. Go ahead and sit. All right. So we're going to be looking a bit this week at 2 Corinthians 8. And what we're talking about with this is what it is to see the gifts that God has given us, what it is that they're for, and how it changes our own heart with giving and sharing and connecting with others. When we do our confession and absolution, we, we take some time to think about what are some things that have been weighing on us, some things that maybe we haven't been thinking about as much lately. And oftentimes, we don't realize how much God has blessed us because we see the things we don't have. We think about what we're missing. We think what we're lacking. 
And then we oftentimes don't pause to realize how much we do have. And not just in comparison to others, but just realizing that God has loved us to give us this life, to give us salvation, to give us community and love with one another. So what I'd like to do is to give you a moment as we come before God, as we spend time in reflection, thinking about what God has to say to you today. Why don't you also be asking, what are the ways that God has been blessing me that I've taken for granted? Maybe I haven't realized how much it is that he shared with me, but also I haven't realized the things that I can then share with others because I have that ability. So let's take some time in silence to reflect, to come before God, to confess knowing that he is merciful and is offering us his forgiveness. of the times whenever we realize that we have held on to things that we were meant to share with others is that even at that moment we still have our God who's saying yeah but I'm just going to share everything with you his love his forgiveness calling us to be his own and that's the joy that we have in this spirit is that even at the moments when we realize that we have become our worst our God is still forgiving us and loving us with his best so even as we face this I have the joy of coming to you to say that because of what Jesus has done, you are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so as we grow through this worship and as in our lives, we get a chance to try again, not because we're going to get it perfect on this side of the resurrection, but because every day God has given us the gift to try again and to give to those around us. Let's continue to worship.
I was enjoying the song too much, so I apologize for the delay. Um, our first reading is from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 33, and can be found on page 688 of your pew Bible. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust, that there may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he calls grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not afflict from his heart or grieve the children of men. The epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 9 and 13 through 15, and can be found on page 967 of your pew Bible. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. <clears throat> Accordingly, we urged Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at this present time should supply their need so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. We welcome you to rise as we read the gospel of our Lord. Our gospel reading is coming from the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Mark. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. 
while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, but he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to you, O oh God. Now, uh, we are going to take a moment to proclaim as the church what the church has been proclaiming, that we believe in God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And with that truth, we're going to speak that using the words of the Apostles' Creed that have been given to us through the centuries. Let us join together as a community. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now the kids have something going on. Do you want them standing yeah. or sitting? No, I, I mean, everybody else can sit, oh, okay. and I'm going to have all of the kids and all of the volunteers from BBS this week to come on up like we did before. And we're going to sing two more songs for you. So this is kind of like a little taste of what we do during BBS. So we come in in the morning, and we have a chance to sing and um, hear a Bible story for the day. And then um, they got to have Miss Lori teach them a Bible lesson. And they got to do a little craft and play games and have a snack. And then we come back and we close out um, in the same that way that we open with the songs and the singing. So I um, think we've got pretty much everybody up here. All right.
Welcome to worship. Uh, wanted to uh, let you all know that uh, apparently uh, Pastor Tyler is a jerk. He went ahead and left on the week where we have to talk about offerings. Yay, good job. I know you planned that. And so now we, we should give a whole sermon about how if you're really, really spiritual, you got to give money to the church. I'll pass this around. I'll make you all feel really, really guilty, right? That's how it's supposed to go. We need a bigger plate. And with that is, is oftentimes that's what we do with, with things like this, is that we try to then come in and people wonder, why does it seem like the church is always about trying to get our money? And it's scary whenever they do. With that, though, what I'd rather do is talk about more of a general larger scheme of what it is that we see with what God has given us. What is it to realize that God has blessed us? And what it is to realize that every single thing that we have and everything we do with it is asking how it is that God wants us to use this? How does God want to bless us and the people around us through it? And, and one of the things that I, I, I thought about was there was a friend of mine. Now, this friend of mine is really good at getting like different deals, okay? And loves all these different like, like deals and all the time. And basically had found a, a bed frame. It was a headboard that was perfect and basically said I need to order it went ahead got online because apparently we can't go to stores anymore everything's through Amazon and so nowadays just put smile at the front and that makes it better but with it is that what we realized is that when the headboard came in and I was finding out that that apparently my friend had ordered the wrong size and so I had to go ahead and get back online I let them know hey I've got the wrong size what do we do do I send the old one get the new one and they said no no, no don't worry about it We'll send you the right size. It would just be too much hassle. Just go ahead and keep that other one. So I get two for the price of one? Oh, yeah, definitely all over that. But what they said also was, you should hear us to confirm by Monday, okay? Confirm by Monday that, that you are going to get it, or we'll go ahead and give you a, a refund. It's like, oh, wow, okay, either I get two for the price of one or one for the price of nothing. Okay, great, this is awesome. Well, Monday came. And she, and she didn't get a, a phone call. but So then Tuesday, she calls up and says, hey, you said you were going to call me yesterday. And they said, oh, sorry about that, but the new headboard is on its way. And she's like, okay, yeah, but you said you were going to call me Monday. They said, oh, okay, well, sorry about that. She spent the next 30 minutes arguing with them until at the end, they finally agreed to give her both headboards and gave her her money back. She got two headboards the price is zero. And, and the price, was, and, and basically this was a story that she was like ecstatic about and just sharing it. Everybody was great. And it was like, wow, what a great deal. And I was like, wait, you got two things? Yeah. For nothing? Yeah. You stole. And it was like, wait, what? I was like, no, no, no. It's, it's a really, really great deal. I was like, wait, 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 wait. So you got both the headboards. Yeah. And you made them give you your money back. Yeah. You're a thief. No. I was like, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You don't quite get it yet. And that's the thing is that oftentimes with what we have and what we do with it is it often changes based on how we view it. Because oftentimes it's not just what we have, but also a question of why has God given us what we have? What is the point 
of having these things. And, and when we look at, at our passage from 2 Corinthians, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 8, and it's speaking in our epistle about giving according to their means and, and, and realizing that we go first to the Lord and we're, we're begging of, of forgiveness, but then realizing that we excel in all these things. And we say it not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. And so what we'll do oftentimes is we will take this idea into certain directions that we feel kind of fit the church really, really well. And one way that we sometimes take this is we'll say, okay, you need to go ahead and help the poor. That is so straightforward, right? If somebody's poor, go help them. Not complicated. But then we qualify it. We help the poor unless they haven't helped themselves. We're going to help the poor unless somebody else is supposed to do it instead of us first. We help the poor unless, and what we do is we try to figure out where in this section that God has given us the parts where do we actually still need to help them at all. And we always try to figure out where's the line. And we do that as the church as well. Then, oftentimes, we'll take it in another direction. And we realize that this is saying, okay, but then that means that we're supposed to work harder. And that if we don't have, it's because we haven't worked for it and we haven't striven hard enough. We've been through a very strange two years, haven't we? How many of us know those who not only have worked hard for years and then in the midst of all this lost that very job just because the industry fluctuated? And then realizing that they're more than happy to take on another job, but you have your resume in front of somebody for two seconds before they look for a keyword, and if they don't find what they're looking for, it's gone. And with that is that oftentimes then we, we want to qualify what it is to help those who are in need, but we also want to then put it back on us about, well, you work hard and therefore you earn enough, and that it's always like that. And then we realize that that's not quite always the case. And then third, we can sometimes just say it's a command. Do what God says. God said to give to those who are in need, go do it. You don't have to like it, just go do it. And after a bit, after a while, it kind of gets a little exhausting, doesn't it? That every single thing comes down to, oh man, why is it that God wants this? And we realize that the God of the heavens who is able to put stars everywhere that they're at, and you realize that there are light years in between them, and yet there are four physical forces happening at the exact same time, one of them that's actually just keeping the atoms of our bodies and of the plants and of everything around us together but not quite together, that there's a strong force and a weak force, the intermolecular forces, the gravitational forces, that they're all still there, and yet somehow he worries how many green pieces of paper you put in that plate. Somehow it seems like something's missing. We realize that at the end of the day, it's not so much that God cares about the actual paper and the plate as much as he's caring about what's happening in your life. Where is it that you're going with this? And we finally get to the last verse, and it says, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, whoever gathered little had no lack. And we realize they're all gathering. But at the end of the day, is someone going to sit there with whatever they gathered and just kind of like put it behind them, keep it in their back pocket? At the end of the day, realizing that when we have so much, we also then share so much. And with that, then we ask the question that I want you to keep in your mind for today. Why did God put this in your hands? Why did God put this in your hands? There's a, a Chinese proverb. I, I got a chance to spend a year overseas, and there's a proverb. I'm going to butcher it because I basically butcher every story I ever tell. It's okay. It's like an endearing thing. It makes first dates really difficult. But with that, though, is that uh, with this Chinese proverb, is that somebody comes along and says, uh, hey, guess what? Uh, there's a, a, a really difficult famine in the area, and all of your crops are, are, are failing. And then the man stands there and says, 
okay, we'll see. Well, isn't that a bad thing? Shouldn't you be sad? Shouldn't you be frustrated? We'll see. But then it ended up that one crop failed and the next one grew abundantly. And he not only had plenty for his family, but also plenty to sell. And they said, wow, it's so great. You have so much. You're so blessed. And he was like, we'll see. Okay. Then turned out his son was able to grow so healthy and so strong that they were able to see how hard he could work. And they said, see how wonderful this was? We'll see. Then the military came along and forced the man's son into the military. And they said, oh, no. Now he is stuck in the military, and he doesn't want to be. And the father said, we'll see. Then it turned out that the son ended up getting an injury and wasn't able to go into the military. And they said, whoa, that's great. He doesn't have to go in. And then the father still said, we'll see. And with each of these things was realizing that whether you have something abundantly or you feel like you're deprived is that that doesn't determine one way or another whether your life is going well or not. It's just different circumstances that change how you respond. And with that, then realizing that why is it that I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do with this? And the thing is that oftentimes we can get so focused on saying what people are supposed to give, especially to us. We do. We do. We fall into that trap a lot. Give, 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 give. Did you realize that in the Levitical laws, there wasn't just 10% tithe to give to the temple. There was also 10% tithe that was for the festivals. It was literally in the law of God that 10% of your money was to go to parties. It was in the law that 10% of your money goes to parties parties. And yet, I think somebody enjoyed that one. Good. All right. Well, maybe that one didn't. Okay. But with that, though, is that oftentimes we miss the fact that even the parts of what God has given us to enjoy and to cherish are also things that God is calling us to do with. It's not that there's 10% of what we have that goes to God. It's that everything is God's. It's just that he uses a lot of it for things that are also directly for us. He gives us food. He gives us a house. He gives us a car. He, maybe he doesn't give us a car. I don't know. Whatever it is that he gives us. But with these things is that each one of those, it's not, oh, I got this so you don't get it. It's that you get everything. Thank you for letting me use some of it. And letting me also give it to my friends and letting me give it to my family. Oh, and by the way, you've given me so much that I don't actually need it. Who else have you given into my life that you want me to use it for? And then what we realize is that this is really a question of asking, how do we view the things that we have? Because with, even with our ministry, are we willing to share that as well? Because Here's the thing about this. Even, we can even take the good things we do, and we can even be selfish with those too. It's like, well, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, feed the people who are here in this neighborhood. Okay, great. Did you take anyone else? Yeah, that's kind of my thing. Uh, you can kind of find your own thing. This is my ministry. I got this one. Or, or you know what? I'm going to go over here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of the, 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 the altar guild and all these things that are up in the front. Yeah, that's my spiritual gift. I'm not sure if that's yours. But maybe I can allow you to be a part of it. Because we take so many things that are meant to be blessings. And we still want to hold them that nobody else gets them. Even our ministry. And that's the thing with this is how many times we even see uh, pastors want to come up and just hear themselves talk all the time and yet aren't willing to share with another pastor to speak the word of God. So definitely looking forward to Pastor Tyler's sermon next week. <laughs> yeah, let's see what you get. Okay. No. But with that, though, is realizing that that is also the way that we view the world because we are in a Western society and we are based on capitalism. That's our life. That's our world. With that is that we can see the best of it. 
there are so many things that have gone well. Work hard, push yourself, persevere, end up being rewarded with your career and your education, all these things. That's great. You know, uh, uh, something doesn't work out well. There's less of a demand. The supply has shifted. Prices have changed. All that. Oh, that's great and all. Except when it's not. Because that we know when we study discrete mathematics and we take a look at the delays that happen in the market and the fluctuations that often come and that oftentimes the supply doesn't actually rise to meet the demand that it was supposed to. And, and then we look back and we say, but wait a minute, what about all the monopolies that happen over these different things? And then we realize that we've become the very thing that has hurt us the most. Because we don't just see our money as a thing. We also see our time and our energy and our very emotions and selves as something we have to hold because I've only got so much and I can't give it to you. And that's the thing about what it is for God to come in and to transform this. And that leads me to what happened yesterday. Um, I was surprised because there was a, a, a housewarming party at my house. I was very surprised. I had no idea it was coming. No idea. It was complete. Complete surprise, just because I texted people in advance and told them about it. Okay, but with it, though, is that one of the strangest things to say, and I had to clarify this, so let me clarify it, is that throughout the party, I was super uncomfortable. <laughs> it, not just because you were there. Okay, but, <laughs> but more than that is because it was people giving things to me. That's hard. Not, not just because, uh, well, that, that, that means that people are, are like loving on me, and I'm like, oh, wow, people are loving on me. I don't know what to make of that. But also is realizing then this question of if somebody has given me these things, am I actually making the most out of it? You know, gave me a box of Legos, and two hours later, well, we had a bunch of kids, so... Let's make sure we pull them out. I could have just set them up on the top. We all saw from the Lego movie, you got to keep them in the same place all the time. Will Ferrell, yeah, just let the kids play with it. I'll just put them back later. But, but realizing, though, is that at that moment in time, it was both the giving and the receiving that was creating this community. And that while I, it's not going to happen all the time, and it was super weird to me, it was that receiving gifts from people was actually bringing me closer to them. And that it was a chance to share in a community. And that's the thing about when we give is that it's not a question of trying to say, how much do you have? How much do I have? But rather is that whatever it is that we have, God is doing wonderful things through it, but also bringing us together through it. And that's the thing we can do with ministry. And that's the thing that we do with our money. That's the thing we do with our time. That's the thing we do with our energy is that God has put these things into your hands because he's blessing you even as you bless others. And so as we see a God who is sending his son to us is that it's not so that then we like come up here and start lording it over you, but rather is that we don't need anything because we've been given everything in Christ Jesus. And so whatever blessings it is that you have, do what God has given you to do with it. And from time to time, whenever you get to do something great and fun, hey, go enjoy it. That's awesome. I'll check on the Facebook for pics, okay? But also, when you realize that you don't really need as much as you have, there are plenty of places to share. And if we as a community can do that together, how can we then be brought closer as a community, as the people of God, by loving on each other, and by loving on those people out there. Thanks be to God. And now for the part of the worship service where I embarrass people. Okay, um, everyone who is joining the church, come on up. Yep, it's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 well. So while they're coming up, uh, just remember, uh, you can, uh, uh, if you're going to be giving anything, you can do it either online or in the narthex on the way out. We welcome whatever you feel God has laid on your heart. Thank you in advance.
So let's have an opportunity to welcome those. So here's what you're going to do, okay? You're going to tell everybody your name. You're going to tell them what led you to Christ Memorial, and you're going to tell them your favorite ice cream flavor, okay? All right, so there you go. Okay, you can decide what, what okay, who's going to go first? Okay, you, great, here you go. All right. Um, Cheryl Angel and um, my husband Steve, and we moved to uh, Houston. I, I grew up in Houston, but we left, raised our family in East Texas and moved back to Houston because they all ended up, all three of our daughters ended up in Houston. So I follow my grandchildren everywhere they go. So we moved to Houston and to this area. Um, we kind of dropped a pin and um, moved within about 20 minutes from each one of our daughters. And my uh, three grandchildren that just live over in, um, across, they go to Meadowood, as some of them do. Uh, went to this preschool here, and so I kind of got acquainted with the church, and this is really the closest Lutheran church to um, to our home. Do you want to say anything? I think you covered it all. I do. I. <laughs> As usual, my wife uh, talks for me, but I'm Steve. I pretty much said it. Ice cream? Oh, ice cream. Oh, mine would have to be um, pistachio. Yes. Chocolate. Yes. Mm. Okay, we're friends now. Okay, good. All right, who's next? You got? All right, go for it. I'm Nicole. Um, Annie Kelly brought me here. And my favorite ice cream's got to be chocolate chip cookie dough. Hello, my name is Candace Lee. Um, I came to the church through Nicole. Um, me and Nicole were at a different place um, and um, there was a reason why we were there because that way we be could become friends um, it was a true blessing so because of Annie when you Nicole then Nicole invited me so I started coming so then I brought this one <laughs> and that one so you know kind of just a domino effect um, but the number one most all-time favorite chocolate Malted French ice cream from Thrifties. Uh, hello, my name is Juliet Hargreaves. Um, I am her daughter. Um, I came to this church through her and Nicole. And my favorite ice cream is chocolate. Okay, great. So with that is, as we welcome them, we have proclaimed that we believe in Father, Son, and Spirit, and that we as a community together are, are living out. The, the teachings of the Lutheran Church are what was given us in Scripture, and the teachings that came through uh, the church over time. So we're going to proclaim that with the words of the Apostles' Creed. So what I will do is I will say, do you believe in? And I will, I will say things that, well, I think you believe in. And then you will say, yes, we do. Okay? So we'll keep it nice and simple. So, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? If say, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell, the third day rose again from the dead, sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from thence will come to judge the living and the dead? If so, then say, yes, we do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, then say, yes, we do. Yes, we do. And do you follow the scriptures and believe what we have been teaching with the whole Lutheran Church, the church throughout the centuries? If so, then say, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Then congratulations, you're a part of us. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Welcome. Welcome very much. Good job. Not at all nervous. Good. Awesome. Not at all. Please rise for prayer. Lord God, as we come to you, we thank you that you have given us so many gifts, not just of the life that you've given us, but also the renewed life, the resurrected life that you've given us in your son. 
And we thank you that this life continues to be empowered by your spirit. And we ask that even as you give us opportunities, you give us gifts, you give us so many things, we ask that you would show us ways that we can share that with others so that we can continue to build the community in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for those who take different roles of leadership in our world and in our lives. Lord God, we thank you that Pastor Tyler Moore will be taking this call and will continue to be with us here in this community. We thank you that in that role, not only will he continue to use the gifts that you've given him, but also that he will also work with us to use the gifts that you've given us as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask you to bless those who are struggling in body, mind, in soul and spirit. Lord God, we remember Steve who is recovering from surgery. Lord God, we ask that you would continue to be with him as he is going through the recovery process as well as his family as they walk alongside him. And Lord God, we remember all of those who are struggling that we know of at this time and we lift them up to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we also know that even as this life does come to an end, it is not what there is to come because there is a life of the world to come and we thank you that even as we look forward to that we also look forward to being reunited with those who have passed on before us and those who will pass on before us as well as those who will pass on after us and we thank you that someday there will be the hope of the resurrection of the come that will bring us back together as your people lord in your mercy hear our prayer for this and for all things we thank you for hearing us, Lord God, and we thank you for teaching us all things, including how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When our Lord was practicing the Passover with his disciples, he ended up transforming it into the communion that we celebrate as a, as a community, as a people. And the thing is that as he was going through it, he took the different parts with the bread and the wine and instituted them as the supper. And he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way also after the supper, he took the, the cup and he gave it to them and he said, take and drink of it, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And then the next day going to the cross and shedding his body and his blood for us so that when we receive it, we proclaim what he has done for us, and we share in this communion as his people. For those baptized in Christ Jesus and believing that he is with us, giving us forgiveness because of what he did on the cross, we welcome you to receive communion with us. For those who need gluten-free, let us know it's in the little glass bowl. For those who need non-alcoholic, it's right in the middle. Please welcome up, and if you wish to come forth for a blessing instead, we welcome you to do that as well. Come. For all has been prepared. The peace of the Lord be with you always.